So a square has an area of R2. Therefore, we know that already R is the length of one of the sides. Yeah. So I don't know. You might draw a quick little sketch of a square and put, you know, R, 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 R for the four sides. So R times R uh, is equal, equal to the area. Okay, an equilateral triangle, what do you know, or do you want to review this, what do we know about an equilateral triangle? All the sides are equal. Okay, that's from Latin, equa meaning equal, has nothing to do with horses, and lateral meaning sides. Mm -hmm. Now what would be the measure of a horse-sided triangle? See, that's a trick question. There is no, could what? be 15 hands, it could be 14 hands. If you had an equislateral triangle, Oh, nothing. No, then it would be like 12 hands or 15 hands or 13 hands times 2 divided by 3. I don't know. We don't know. But an equilateral triangle, we do know all three sides are equal. We know that all three angles are equal also, but I don't think that's going to come into play in this question. Yeah. So all three sides are equal. So a perimeter of E, and again, clarify this for yourself just set this out sort of like a parts list you know if you get a piece of nine uh, if you get a piece of nice uh, unassembled Swedish furniture yeah what's it start out with it starts out with a price list a uh, uh, parts list you have 16 yeah. of these screws and four of these sides and six of these sides and half of them were made by East German convict labor but we don't tell people that anymore okay so you draw your little square and beneath that you know, side is equal to R, draw a triangle, perimeter is equal to E, therefore each side of that triangle is equal to E divided by 3. Yeah, I drew that down there. Like. Okay, yeah. Um, and then if R is the perimeter of the square, okay, that's lowercase r, so uppercase r is the length of one side of the square. I wish they wouldn't use capital R and lowercase r, but you're going to have to deal with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if R is the perimeter of the square, then how do you how do you equate that piece of information with the information above about the area of the square and the length of the side? Well, if R is the perimeter, well, little R is the perimeter of the square, then one side is R divided by four, and big mm -hmm. R equals small R divided by four. Times four. Isn't it times four? No, R equals small r divided by four, right? If oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so, yeah, see, that right there is reverse. I mean, why would you make capital R be a smaller value than lowercase r? Yeah. Just to throw off old people like me. Yes, capital R is lowercase r divided by four. Yeah. Okay, E is a side of the triangle, and so E, little e times three, little e is equal to... E divided uh, by three. Yeah, big E divided by three. Yeah. Okay, so now just uh, combining those two formulas, E plus R is equal to... Um, for R plus... Let me be more specific. Small e plus small r. Well, it's 4r plus e divided by 3. Okay. And let's deal with the division by 3 correctly, because we could try to use division by 3 incorrectly, or we could make sure we're applying division by 3 correctly. And uh, you can see a... I don't know where they're getting seven, but uh, they're they're trying to give us four sides plus three sides and think that we're going to want to divide that by seven. But that's not going to happen, is it? Yeah, obviously not. So, okay, A is the obvious wrong answer. We can rule that out. Now, what would it take for C to be the right answer? C would multiply three times four and give us 12. Yeah. Because we've got four sides in the square and three sides in the triangle. And so if we're going to be dividing, that's what would make C the right answer. Otherwise, the other three remaining choices have us dividing simply by three. Now, uh, I, which yeah. which one do they say is the right answer first? It's E. I just, okay. you know, I, I added, I 
spot that I could add 4R plus E divided. Right, right. And what you were doing is you were correctly applying division by 3 to one of the two quantities, yeah. but you were incorrectly applying division by 3 to the other quantity. Yeah, exactly. And so for to account for that properly, you had to, what, triple the R value before you could divide it by 3. Yeah. In order to carry out division by 3, which is what you wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that one was just a matter of keeping an eye on them and making sure that yeah. they, you know, were honest. And and you see that now, obviously. Yeah, yeah I But see it. more usefully is like uh, you can see the answer that you could rule out. I mean, definitely you can rule out A because that uh, that has division by seven. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could you could look at C. Well, C is incorrectly trying to put in. Uh, uh, it, it's trying to accommodate division by three and division by four at the same time, but we're only looking for division by three. So C is wrong because our answer needs to involve division by three. And now we look at three different approaches, B, D, or E, that divide by three. Well, B is wrong because it applies the th division by three correctly to one of the values, but not the other one. So we rule that one out. And now D or E, one of these two must be right. We can see, okay, now here they're taking into account multiplying the other value. They just multiplied the wrong value in D. Yeah. And E was the correct one. But as you whittle it down closer and closer to the right answer, you're going to see closer and closer to the final form of the answer. And D and E, looking at those, would have cued you in, okay, one of these needs to get multiplied by four first, or yeah. by three first, and then you would have picked E. Okay, I think I beat that one to death. The one, the one thing is like I, I totally I think that I understand the um, like obvious advantages of like um, just going through and and um, like disproving mm -hmm. or or like or like yeah excluding going yeah. through it and like yeah, excluding like the different ones but sometimes then I'm like then I sometimes end up excluding like all of them. Okay, at so that get, point... Like, too much into, like, the, I don't know, like, groove of excluding and then somehow, Yeah, like, yeah, and and so that's a good point. Okay, at that point, you still haven't made a mistake because you haven't input your answer yet. If you end up excluding them all, then you get a chance to say, okay, wait a minute, I got a little bit too overzealous there. Let me go back and see where I might have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. And and then you, uh, you know, you take a second look at things and say, was I too hasty in ruling one of these out? You know, what, what really, what do I know? And also, maybe if you get to that point, maybe it's time to go back to the book. Say, wait a minute, maybe I'd better try and solve this one out the direct way because I muddied things up trying to just exclude. You you don't want to forget that, yes, you know how to solve these things. I mean, you know how to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a combination of the two approaches. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first straight approach is solving this directly. And for that... You want to translate their words into variables and yeah. equal and plus and minus that you can put down as, you know, rules. And they would lead you to solving it, you know, the conventional way. Then your alternative approach is to start ruling out wrong answers. For any one given question, your method is going to be some combination of the two. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to solve it in like two seconds, like that one-fourth question. Yeah. And then it's just before you press that answer button, you just want to at least really quickly rule out the other answers for, you know, whatever reason. Yeah. But, you know, don't, don't uh, forget about your regular conventional problem-solving techniques as well. They're just as useful as they ever were. I'm just saying use them in conjunction with uh, the other approach. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, if you go too far with eliminating answers, then your best bet may be, okay, I'm going to do this one old school. I'm just going to mm -hmm. solve this one straight out because obviously I fell for one of their tricks, you know, somewhere when I was excluding. 
that's also I mean that's your that's your second chance at still maintaining perspective on the question. Because if you lose perspective crossing things out too quickly, you still have the clear perspective of solving it as a math problem. <laughs> 